All right, Jeff. Uh, evidently, the ill care caddis was uh, a little more complicated than you were looking for for your first fly. So uh, we are going to tie a partridge in orange. This isn't the classic pattern. This one has a little dubbing ball in there, which I think helps make the, uh, the partridge feather fibers kind of pulse around it. Um, I could be wrong, but fish eat it. So that's kind of what it looks like. It's got some lumpy uh, head cement on it, but that's all right. So for materials, we've got a size 14 hook. We're going to take that. Do we? Yeah, we do. We're going to put it in the vise, mash down that barb. Once your casting is a little more consistent, you can get into the ethical issues of barbs, but uh, for now, I highly recommend you mash down all your barbs because it makes it easier to take them out of your backside when you accidentally hook yourself. So there's our first material, the hook. Second material is thread. This is a 70 denier ultra thread. It's partridge and orange, so I'm using orange. This is fluorescent orange because I don't have a non-fluorescent orange. I'm going to wax it. I don't really count that as a material. Wrap that thing around your index finger one or two times. Approach the hook and about an eye length. That's the eye, so one eye length, maybe eye length and a half. Um, wrap it. You just wrap, wrap it right on there, okay? Now leave yourself a couple inches on the tag end. This is the tag end. This is the, the spool or the bobbin end. Wrap it over and around. Cross over what you just put on there and keep going. Now see how I'm holding that upwards and at an angle? When you come up, you want the thread to cross. You want the bobbin end to cross the live end above the hook, ride down it, and onto the hook. That helps you get tight touching turns. You can go kind of fast doing this. Uh, you don't have to go fast. When you're just starting out, it's more important to get it right than to get it fast. Okay? And wrap back towards the gouge. That's where that barb was. We've got a couple more. Maybe three. Good enough. Now at this point, you can cut it or you can rip it off in a manly fashion. It's 70 denier thread. It's very easy to rip off, but don't tell your mama. How is that good looking mom of yours? Alright, so, uh, now you got to come back forward. Now, you could take tight touching turns the whole way back and make it nice and smooth and pretty. Or, you could spin your bobbin clockwise. That's that way. Which cords the thread up. And take open spiral turns. Get some ribbing on there, which I think adds visual interest. We'll go to just behind that tie-in point, And then we'll take some dubbing. You remember dubbing? Now this is called ice dubbing. I gave you a little packet of it. I'm using rusty brown. You use whatever color you got. You want some kind of contrast for the body. I have way too much here. You only need maybe that much. Keep it close at hand. You can always get more or put back what you don't use. Pull your bobbin down. I pull it down so that it rests on the edge of the, uh, the pedestal of my vise. It's that little platform the vise sits on. That just keeps it from swinging. Wet your fingers, grab just a tiny little bit, and twist it onto the thread. You're twisting in one direction, okay? See how, how little there is on there? Can you see that against my t-shirt? Just a tiny little bit. You can start way up here. If you're worried about getting poked with the hook, rotate that vise so that the uh, point of the hook is out of the way. And I put too much on up there, so you can kind of stretch it out, pull down, and just go like that and spread it out. Now you need an inch, inch and a half. I'm going to go that extra quarter inch, because that's what I do. And we're going to make a tight little, you know what, I took it all out, I'm going to put it all on there. We can always take it off later. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to wrap it around here and make a little ball for those feathers to pulse around. Now you see I've got some bare thread there. That's okay. Wind your spool and your bobbin back up. 
so that the barrel of your bobbin holder is right at the edge of that dubbing. When you're applying dubbing to the thread, you can either wrap it around like this, or you could use that cool rotary vise your mom got you and uh, rotate it. Go zigzag back and forth a little bit. We're just making a bump. Doesn't need to be long, but it needs to be tall. Not super tall. That's probably all you need, but we're going to put all of that on there just because. And then wrap forward and around it a couple, two, three times just to uh, get in front of it. Now, the next thing you need is the partridge feather. Uh, take your little, you, you got that kit with all the materials in it. It came with a Hungarian partridge feathers natural kit pack and uh, dump about half of that onto your desk and then sneeze so that it goes everywhere. Once you've cleaned that up, pick a likely looking feather and uh, that's way too big for that little 14. We're gonna get us a smaller feather. That might be a little small. This is half a fly tie and is sorting through feathers looking for the right one. If you got a skin, like a cape or whatever. It's both easier and more difficult. It's easier because they don't go everywhere. It's more difficult because they all look like each other and they're all right there. But just sort through. And what we're looking for is this. this. I think this might be the best of the bunch. Uh, we're looking for a feather. See how you got the two different kinds of barbs on it? You got these long skinny ones and then you've got these floofy puffy ones. Uh, we won't want the floofy puffy ones so we can go ahead and strip those off. We want the long skinny ones. The, they, they refer to uh, these things as webby and non-webby but uh, you see those? We want those to be about the length of the body so that's about right okay that's not a bad looking feather now you notice this hungarian partridge feather has two curves to it one goes that way and the other goes that way we want to place it so that the uh the longer curve lays on top of the hook okay we don't want it curving up we want it curving down towards the hook and we tie these in by the tip so you grab just the tip. You can do this with your hackle pliers, or you can just grab it with your fingers. And we just do that. All right. A lot of guys will cut this so that there's a little triangle. They, they basically cut this section off so that there's a little tiny thing to tie in with. I have old eyes, and I'm old-fashioned, and I just like to tie the whole friggin' thing in there. Lay it right on top, and take two maybe three tight turns around it. Now you can take that stuff that's sticking out, fold it over, the Scottish dude, Mr. McPhail, says that that gives it more, uh, more strength for when you're, when you're wrapping this on. So now we've tied the tip in, grab the butt with your hackle pliers and stand it up. All right, shiny side going that way, dull side going that way. Wet your fingers and sweep them back, shiny side towards the dull side. Give it a little pinch and a little wiggle, and they'll just kind of start to come back. This is one of the easiest flies to tie. Let's go ahead and move our thread forward. All right, so you've got them folded back and you just start wrapping it around over the top, down underneath and towards you, and it looks kind of like a, a mess. It is. Every time you come around, you just wrap those, or you smooth those fibers back so you don't trap any. In the end, you want all the fibers pointing back and none pointing forward. If you get some, like, see here, I've got a couple uh, that are pointing down. That's okay. That's what scissors are for. But you just keep going. Pretty much use this whole feather up. Um, but you don't have to get every single barb. If you look closely, you'll see I have some that I'm not going to use. I've got the ones I want, and then I've got the ones that I'm going to cut off. I lay them over on top of and across the hook. 
always finish with the material you're wrapping up and you thread down, right? That way you can come over with tension, trap it down, give it a little tug, do it again, give it a little tug, and then you can come in here, you open your scissors just slightly like that, see? And you don't even clip it, you just get on the stem, get down towards the thread, push forward. This keeps you from cutting the thread. See, we didn't use them all, we used most of them, but that's all right. And uh, that way you can save as many of the fibers as, you, as is possible. You can, you can wet your fit fingers if that bothers you, just go ahead and get in there and cut them out. That's why these scissors have such a fine little point on them. Go in there and wrap a little thread head working backwards, front to back, which forces those fibers to lay back also. I've seen a lot of these things where the fibers are all splayed out, and that's probably okay. As it's pulled through the water, they're going to be forced backwards. I just like it to look like it's already... I want it to look fast, man. So we've wrapped it back. I've got a little stem showing. I'm just going to cover that up, bury that in there, they say. And then uh, I'm going to take my Mattarelli whip finisher, commonly referred to as a whip finisher, hook it on there like so, lift that up like that, cross them, let it rotate, bring the knot up, towards the eye and then work back towards the point. This is that same knot. Remember when I showed you how to uh, whip the end of a rope to keep it from fraying? This is that same knot and we're doing the same thing except we're tying it off. Now I trapped one of those fibers. I'm going to cut this thread loose by making that little opening in my scissors and sticking it up in there and just nicking it. See I didn't even close the scissors. I'll close them on this uh, that's bothering me and you are nearly done my friend get your mom's nail polish or some head cement and put a tiny little drop on there tiny little drop 